So what is it like being an Austin food blogger? Um, Austin food blogger scene is crazy because no matter how many days a week, how many breakfast, lunch, dinner you go to, you can never keep up. This scene is it's insane. Can't keep up with it. But I love that. Hello, my name is Yolanda, and this is Eatin' and Sippin' Locally. This show is podcast in Austin, Texas. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14. And on this episode, I want to share with you a wonderful Austin food blogger and my good Instagram friend, Ashley M. Now look her up on Instagram, Facebook, and her blog, and all three are called Feed This House. Now, you heard her in the beginning of the show telling us what it's like to be an Austin food blogger. Well, earlier this year, Ashley invited me to her home, and let me tell you, what a treat. She is a wife and a mother, and I had the pleasure of meeting her son, Max, who just turned one years old this month. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Max. Now, you'll be hearing his voice throughout the interview. Now, Ashley shared with me how she became a food blogger and how much her blog and her life has changed now that she has not one, but two kids. You've been an Austin food blogger since 2015? I didn't really make it official until 2017. Okay. And that's when um, I had had Feed This House as my Instagram handle. Mm -hmm. And it was really more to share recipes with friends. And that's kind of what it was. And then it was, I was always doing Yelp reviews and posting pictures. And I'm like, well, why don't I just post them on here too? And then I joined Austin Food Bloggers Alliance. And that's when things, it became, and I made my website and things became became, more official. And this house became like, okay. And my daughter was at school three Mm -hmm. days a week. And I could have the time to meet with people. And that's when it really became a thing mm-hmm. more so yeah instead of just a hobby now I'm like oh this is this is actually like now when people say oh do you stay home with kids I'm like I actually have my own side hustle <laughs> so what is it like being an Austin food blogger um Austin food blogger scene is crazy because no matter how many days a week how many breakfast lunch dinner you go to you can never keep up this scene is okay so I'm from Columbus Ohio okay and we go back at least once a year. And every time I'm like, let's go to the new restaurants when we go back. There's like one or two, you know. It's, right. It's just not like... It's not it, the I mean, growth here, that we have here. It is just insane. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just can't keep up with it. Mm-hmm. It's, and I, but I love that. Like, I love that I have a list on my phone in my notes that mm-hmm. is just growing. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Do you find it hard now that you've kind of making the changeover a little bit with being with family? Um, yes. Well, the hardest thing for me is I lack flexibility. And um, a lot of the bloggers on the scene are pretty young. I mean, I'm probably one of the older ones. I'm 34. Well, I guess I'll be 35 in August. Um, and I have kids. So right. I have, you know, I have times I need to r- rush back and get back for school pickup with my daughter. You know, the summer I'm going to have my daughter with me. So that makes an extra challenge. Mm-hmm. I have times I need to nurse Max I have you know and I since I had you know since I've had Max um I haven't done as many evening gigs because I don't like missing feeding him and putting yes. him to bed yeah so unless that it's so something important. that's like very very like okay this is worth it for me to go and my husband is totally supportive and would help out and feed him a bottle but I mm-hmm. just like it feels sad to me so I have a hard time with that but. yeah and now you have a second child has it changed with your single friends in the food blogging um, world I feel like it has I mean I have my core people that are so supportive like I have people that when I go to meetings with them are you know where's his binky can I get his binky or I'll hold him for you while you're grabbing that shot or I mean people the people that I do a lot of appointments with are mm. I, I mean it, there are no words for how amazing they are to me. And, I mean, he has been breastfed in about a million public places. <laughs> and people that are okay with that means the world to me because I'm like, you know, I just I need to feed my kid. This is just kind of how we roll. This little guy, I'm not really comfortable leaving him yet. Yeah. We're not near family. So, yeah, he goes with me and 
it gets interesting, but <laughs> thankfully uh, yeah. people are really nice. You do a lot of blogging about uh, kid-friendly restaurants. Do you find Austin to be a kid-friendly place to be? <laughs> no. I mean, so what are I some mean, of the clues that you I, notice right away when you go into a restaurant that say that they're kid-friendly? Well, okay, if they have a playscape, obviously it's a kid-friendly place. But there are so many places that do not have changing stations. I mean, like if you if you open, I have... Um, I have an SUV, and if you open the trunk of my car, I have a changing mat down in the back, and I have diapers and wipes because uh, more often than not, there are not changing stations. And so Max has changed in the trunk of my mm-hmm. car, which is probably cleaner anyway than other changing stations. But I mean, I wouldn't say, I would say, as far as most of the, you know, trendy spots and restaurants are not super accommodating to families. But yeah. I like, you know, that's part of what I wanted Feed This House to be, is a resource to people. Um, A lot of my following is families, and that's what I want as my following. Obviously, I'm happy with every follower, but I want moms and dads, caregivers to know that you don't have to just go to the chains. You don't have to just go to fast food. Like, you can explore, and I'll be your test for you, and I'll show you, like, hey... This place and anyone, if they want, can send me a message, which I have gotten messages like, hey, we're we're going for this occasion. We're going out with the kids. Like, what would you recommend? Like, what is OK? You know, because I think a lot of times as parents, we get scared to go anywhere mm-hmm. because it's just easier yeah. to, to go to the same places. The food blogging while pregnant was what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I was nauseous the entire pregnancy, the entire pregnancy. So at every event, I mean, there was one event we had at um, 68, 68 degree kitchen. That's like Barton Springs area. Mm-hmm. And I was still not telling anyone I was pregnant. It was really early. And I had a bag of, I think it had goldfish and pretzels and Cheerios in it, this little Ziploc bag. And I was snacking on it before we got there. Because a lot of these events, like when food comes out, you have no control over. And when it does come out, you're photographing for a long time. And like I was at that point in my pregnancy that if I didn't have something in my stomach every second, yeah. I felt like I was going to throw up. And so I had like my little bag. So this is your mommy mix? <laughs> it was just, I <laughs> think it was actually Olivia's snack that just happened to be in the car. And I just okay. was like survival mode. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, everyone asks, why aren't you drinking? And I think I said that Scott and I were doing a cleanse and, like, we were doing Whole30 or something. So why didn't you tell anybody? Were you afraid that they might judge you? Or were you just no, wanted we to were see still, we were still in the early, early stages? And um, Olivia, to us, we wanted to make sure it was going to be a viable pregnancy before we told anyone. But even, I, I think I would be more open anyway but Olivia was the one that we wanted to tell first oh, and I didn't want her to go through any trauma of a miscarriage so we wanted to make sure we were safe to tell her but I also felt like I would have been disrespecting my daughter to tell other people mm-hmm. when she's like my closest person so um, we waited until we had another ultrasound I think it wasn't it was at 10 weeks so it wasn't even till 12 weeks that we waited but she was noticing like Things, you know, she saw me and said, Mommy, your tummy. And and then, you know, I was so tired that her and Daddy were putting me to bed instead of, like, me putting her to bed. And, I mean, it, she didn't even think about that. But I'm like, Scott, we've got to say something because, like, this is weird. Like, things that are going on in this house are just not normal. <laughs> but, yeah, a food blog, back to the food blog you've been praying. I mean, it was just, there were times where I would take pictures of things that I'm like, I know I would normally love that dish, but right now it looks so <laughs> vile to me. But so that has been the best thing about not being pregnant now is like actually enjoying food again. And mm. because normal Ashley pretty much likes any food, but pregnant Ashley likes like <laughs> very childhood food like spaghetti with butter and parmesan. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Now, people always want to know um, one question. that Do you eat all the food that you all order at a restaurant? That is something that my family asks all the time. They're like, Ashley, like we, we sit with you. We know like you don't eat all that food. Uh, no, I typically, though, I try to be very transparent about 
what I tried and what I liked. So if it's not something I tried, I won't like rave about it and say, mm-hmm. oh, you should try this when I didn't try it. But a lot of times I do try like bites of ever, like I want to know mm-hmm. what what things are. But yeah, I mean, sometimes at a restaurant, the food is the amount of food is crazy. Yeah. People look at different Instagrams and think, oh my God, this is such a great place to go because this person said that, you know? And so how do you feel about when you try something and it's really not what it claimed to be? Honestly, if it's not good, I don't post it. There is, there's several times I've been to places and I just let them know ahead of time, like, listen, this is, I, I want my audience to trust me. So this is my business. And up front, I say, I mean, if they're having me out and it's a comped meal, I do say up front, like, I will not post it if it's not something I stand behind. So there have been places that, and I won't say anything negative, you just won't hear me talk about it. Yeah. Oh, good. just kind of, because I don't want to hurt someone's business. And then, you know, it could have been an off day in the kitchen. Who knows? But if I didn't have a good experience, I can't tell my followership that I liked it. Yeah. Um, I've had one situation where no one even asked. I mean, we didn't touch our food and because it was, it was almost inevitable and, um, they didn't even ask oh, wow. about oh. it. So I just said something to me. I just was like, okay, I won't be posting about this place. But yeah, for the most part, I mean, I'm not, they're not always sponsored that I'm there too. So if it's my own money, like I'm, I'm just not going to say anything. All I right. just kind of leave. And that would be my next question. Do you get paid to go out and eat? <laughs> sometimes yes. Um, and sometimes no. If, it, if it's paid, I do put sponsor or ad um just so that i mean that's that's something that by austin food bloggers alliance i'm also required to do Mm -hmm. but i also just think it's another way to be transparent that that i was paid to be there um that my meal was comped so from another mother or any other foodie bloggers that want to start out in this is it how important is it to join a food alliance group I think on the front end, for me, it was really helpful. Um, for one, I met really good people, mm-hmm. and they became a resource. I Everyone in that group has been helpful if I've reached out about what kind of lens do you use for your camera, or what is you know what app do you use to edit photos, or you know just things here and there. And also, the monthly happy hours, I mean, it gave me access to places that I maybe wouldn't have otherwise to, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So that was helpful. Lately, I haven't even been able to go to the things, but I do still, on the back end, like online, I mean, we will submit and share our blog posts with one another, and I do like to still be a part of that. Are people really reading blogs? I think it depends. You know, I've had, sometimes it shocks me because I get messages, people that read them that I wouldn't think would read them. You know, or I mean, I'm always happy when a friend does, but I'm also like, yeah, they're my friend and they're just being nice to support me. Mm -hmm. But then I'll get messages from people and they're like, I love that you wrote this. And I'm like, oh, I wouldn't like restaurant owners and things that have been like, oh, I read your blog and I loved this post. And I'm like, I'm shocked. (laughs) Yeah. Like like pleasantly shocked. So I guess, I don't know. I do read blogs, but I seek them out like article but I there are times too where I'm on Instagram and someone says I have this new blog post and I will go straight to their bio and yeah so would I something I want to mm-hmm. great now you launched your website in 2017 yes it's a really great website it's got a lot of great information it's informative and it's very family oriented and I really like that a lot and there was one article on there that I really enjoy it was why is it weird to say never yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Yes. You did that one, and I never thought I would have a baby doing Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things I used to always say as a kid, like, oh, I'm so glad I don't have a Christmas birthday. And then, you know, when you get older, you're like, oh, I would never have a kid during Christmas. That's just mean to the kid. And then, lo and behold, Max's due date was December 26th. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I might miss Christmas. I might be in the hospital. <laughs> but... You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. And I love how you bring O into the picture of everything you're doing. Yes. And she so- had so many questions when we told her that she was going to be a big sister. And her mind, just the way her mind, she's kind of a worry work, but the way her mind worked was mm-hmm. just so funny. And all, you know, she started spiraling into like, what does the baby eat? And when you have ice cream, is the baby eating ice cream? But just all these things. <laughs> Great way to share. <laughs> and another great article that I read was the travel. I thought that was really good of how to pack 
especially on the plane. Yeah. That was a really great one. And I hope you continue to bring Thank that you. into motion because nice to have a little checklist from somebody who's already done it and said, oh, I can take the Ashley checklist. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed you're working. We are going to pause here for a moment because it is Max's nap time. For Ashley, family is always first. So we'll continue once Max is comfortably sleeping in his crib. Pleasant dreams, Max. Okay, so you've put Max down to bed. And tell me, how, how did you set him up for nap time? So Max is a crib napper, for sure. I promised I wouldn't do this again because our daughter was like this, where she doesn't nap just like on the go very easily. And lo and behold, I have another crib napper. Like he loves <laughs> to be in his crib, which is, I mean, it's good. It's a safe place. But he has, I put him in, it's called a Merlin's Magic Sleep Suit. Oh, and what's that? it's, I mean, he looks like a marshmallow man in it. <laughs> but you put their legs and their arms are separated. And it looks, I guess, kind of like a ski suit. Um, and then you you zip it up, or like a snowsuit. And you there's two zippers on each side. And it helps them with that four-month sleep regression where they start kind of like flailing and kind of waking themselves up. Which with Olivia, we didn't have this suit. And I remember going through that sleep regression at being rough. And we started using this like right at four months. And he loves it. Like he looks at it and smiles. And he's super cozy in that little thing. And How did you discover this? My sister gave it to us because they use it for their kids. So we inherited <laughs> oh. a bunch of stuff from her kids this time, okay. which was nice. Because it's the first time we ever got hand-me-downs. And hand-me-downs are amazing. <laughs> I mean, are they? I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> But he loves it, and um, he sleeps with white noise in the background too. And then, yeah, we have his camera. Like we just have a, we don't have an actual baby monitor. We have a camera that's like right above his crib, mm-hmm. and it's attached to our iPad. And yeah, that's kind of nice because you're still able to do things and just still check on him without disturbing him. You know what's really yeah. nice is we have the app on our phone, and so I can see him anywhere. Like my husband and I did our first date night, and our my in laws were watching the kids. And they put Max to bed, and we were like, we're to see if they did it the way we told them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they had, like, at the time, I think he was still swaddled in a different suit, and, like, Scott got on the microphone and was like, hey, Dad, you forgot to put on his suit. And I'm like, dang it, and he lifted Max up. So it was really funny. But, yeah, I was like, it is kind of peace of mind. If it's ever, like, a sitter or everything, I'm nervous. It'd oh, be man. nice. It was more to just heckle his parents, but. <laughs> that is funny. Do you listen to any other podcasts? Lately, my favorite podcast has been Dax Shepard's podcast. Have you ever listened to it? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Tell me about it. It's called Armchair Experts. I mainly remembered him from the movie An Idiocracy. I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. saw that movie. But I mainly remembered him from that movie. But he is a very intelligent guy. In like his sobriety, he kind of touches on things he's learned about himself. He's really interested in... Um, psychology and behind things but they interview like the widest array of human beings like they had Sanjay Gupta on once and then they've also had um, Gwyneth Paltrow okay. but then they've had some comedians they've just kind of had like all over but I, I don't know it's a really good I, oh I'll I, have to take a listen to it yeah I found a really cool podcast show um, the other day called Moms Who Rule the World Oh, and her little slogan is for busy moms who are in between the rule in the world and losing their shit. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> I'll have to listen to that. It is a really cool one. It's done by this woman named Amy, and she is in um, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, I just start recently listening to it, and she did a whole segment during the time she was pregnant. And then oh. after she had her child, it's pretty good. I'm not a mom anymore, but it was yeah. it's very You're entertaining. Still a mom. I'm still a mom. <laughs> That yes, my, yeah, that won't change. I should say that. I'm not having babies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but uh, it's a really great one. And I wanted to share that with you because yeah. I want you to check that Thank one out. You. So tell us about hashtag S-A-H-M and what is that all about? That was, um, so stay at home mom is what S-A-H-M stands for. And I never even knew that acronym. I would have had to Google it before being a stay at home mom. But when we moved to Austin, I knew nobody, and we, um, I started joining, there's all these different Facebook moms groups, 
And so I would see the acronym all the time. And I, prior to being a stay-at-home mom, had no idea of how hard it really is. I mean, I was a working mom when we lived in Ohio. I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, and that had its own challenges. But I guess before even having kids, I just pictured stay-at-home moms to be like doing yoga all day and shopping, getting your nails done, like all these things. In reality, you don't get to do any of those things. And I pictured like these peaceful days where you're just sitting on the floor doing puzzles with your kids and reading books. And it's just so not like that. I yeah. Mean, it's chaos. Yeah. You know what you call yourself is chaos coordinator. <laughs> chaos coordinator. Chaos coordinator. I mean, it is because you're paying bills. You're doing it like you really, yeah, you're not just a house. Don't ever say I'm just a housewife. No. it is an important and it is hard job. I think it's important to understand and my husband and I have gotten eventually it took us a while to get good at this but understanding there are seasons and so things change all the time so this season that we might be in now might be a different season later like before we just had Olivia and we had our groove and she was in school and I mean I was able to go to the gym again and do these things well now I'm in this season again where that's a different season and I have to because I do like to work out. It's my mental like lifeline. And I have to do it in the morning, otherwise it doesn't get done. But if mommy doesn't get that time, mommy's kind of crabby because that's my only mm-hmm. time of the day that's really for me. And it's mm-hmm. more about that. I mean I do like to stay healthy and active, but it's more about me getting my mind right to enter the day. From five forty five AM, it's go, 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 go. And I'm constantly thinking of next steps and what needs to be done. And, you know, there's just, there's school projects, there's this and that, that just, that has to be done. And I just wanted people to see, and I have a lot of pregnant friends too, and I kind of wanted to be like, this, just so you know, like, this is kind of like what, like real life. Yeah. Like, I'm not sitting at some beautiful cafe with my kids who are acting perfect, you know, <laughs> exactly. smiling and like the exactly. stress, because more often than not, I don't wear dresses because they get spit mm-hmm. up on them. Like, there's just the reality. Well, I think you tagged me in something recently, a meme that said, like, I, was, I don't want to, I'm going to decline, but I still want to be invited, oh, exactly. which is so true. Like, I, that is that is me 100%. Like, more often, like, I am a homebody. Like, as, as much as I'm out, like, I'm out a lot, but I'm also the ultimate homebody. Like, mm-hmm. if it's up to me, I'm home in my nursing tank and my leggings from Target, and I'm with my husband and my kids. And that's just kind of like one of my favorite thing to do. So I want people to know more about you. I want them to read your fabulous blog. I want them to go on Instagram and find you and Facebook. So tell everybody how they can find you on social media. My Instagram is feed this house and my Facebook is the same feed this house. And my website is easy, www.feedthishouse.com. And I'm Ashley, and it's been awesome to be here. I'm so glad that you came to my house. You made the trek to my house, and that you were, I mean, just so everyone knows that's listening, Yolanda came all the way here. She's been flexible about me having Max and rocking him during part of the interview. She's been flexible about me pausing so that I could put him down for a nap, and I just really appreciate her flexibility. Well... I appreciate you that want to share such great things that you're doing uh, and want to put it out there and let other women know that it's, it's possible. Yes, all things are possible. Thank you, Max, for being the perfect little boy throughout the interview. And you can check him out and the family on Instagram. And thank you, Ashley, for inviting me to your lovely home and sharing your story with my listeners, and for always supporting me on Instagram. Well, we come to the end of the show. I want to thank you all for listening, and I look forward to eating and sipping locally with you guys in 2020. Bye-bye. Connect with me through Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at Eaton and Sippin' Locally. Love to see what you're posting and who you're following. And if you'd like to come on the show, check out my webpage at Eaton and Sipping. That's E-A-T-I-N and Sipping, S-I-P-P-I-N, locally.com. Subscribe to the show on Apple iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify, or wherever you download your podcast show at. And if you do, download me.
please rate the show and leave me a comment because I like to know what you're thinking. Well, until we meet again, keep it local. Music